As we've discussed on this show, PhD doctor and public intellectual Cornel West has thrown his hat in the 2024 presidential contest as a third party candidate. Now, he announced with a relationship with the Movement for a People's Party and under some pressure, largely from the left, due to some controversy around MPP, he has recently announced that he is planning to seek the nomination of the Green Party as well. Not everybody is happy about his choice to run as an independent third party candidate, however, as opposed to running as a Democrat, as RFK Jr. and Marianne Williamson have chosen to do. Recently in Jacobin Magazine, journalist Ben and Burgess wrote an article making the case that Cornell West should, in fact, run on the Democratic Party ticket. I asked him specifically on an episode of my podcast, Bad Faith, that was released this morning as the decision making process to run as a third party candidate as opposed to a Democratic Party candidate where he could conceivably take advantage of the primary media cycle and get town halls and even potentially a debate. Let's hear what he had to say. What I like about the third party strategy, whichever third party on the left you're talking about, is that it is a clear and unequivocal affirmation of the rot at the center of the Democratic Party Mm. and the corporate wing suffocating the progressive wing. That's Brother Bernie and company or the squad and company. See that they forever run up against a stone wall and end up being a kind of uh, 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 cover for Wall Street, Pentagon, dot, 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 dot. That's the kind of freedom, you see. Uh, So that even say, my my dear brother RFK Jr., you know, I work with him. I have wonderful, wonderful relations with him and so forth. But he can't tell the truth about the Israeli occupation. He can't tell it truth about the suffering of our precious Palestinian brothers and sisters. That, that, that's just one small example. You see, he's, he's locked into a certain discourse that has been normalized by the Democratic Party that refuses to come to terms with truth and justice, the truth of the West Bank and Gaza. All right. So what do you make of the strategy? Some people responded to that clip when I posted it this morning saying, I understand the kind of ethical claim that you're making here, but strategically, is it the most savvy thing to do to run as a Green Party candidate when you could potentially run as a Democrat and then do a dirty break and choose to run independent after the primary season is over? And what do you make of his argument that the reason that you fundamentally can't run as a Democrat is because you were forced to bend the knee on certain issues like Israel-Palestine the way that many people believe RFK Jr. had to do after first coming out in support of Roger Waters and then deleting this tweet and flip-flopping on that support? Yeah, it sounded like he was effectively arguing that almost his um, his soul will be tainted by participating in the Democratic Party process, which, you know, maybe that's an existential argument, is, is not a good, as you, as you pointed out, strategic argument. I, I, I would think if he, you know, if he wants to, again, if he wants to keep his soul intact, fine. If he wants to make, make a go of it, I think he'd really better be served by being in the Democratic um, uh, process. Clearly, there is an appetite for non-Biden candidates. We've talked a lot about uh, Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. getting, I I think, numbers that surprised a lot of folks for a while, continue to frustrate the mainstream media a little bit, who want to portray, you know, the very Biden media, who want to portray it as a united front and and are, I think, are in great pains to explain why there is this significant minority of uh, of poll respondents saying they're interested in someone other, other than Biden, someone as kooky from the mainstream media's perspective as RFK Jr. They can't square this with the positions he's taken, particularly on Ukraine and vaccines. Um, so, Cornell and Cornell West obviously has his, his own criticisms of an RFK Jr. from the the Israeli issue and other things. So, I, I think he'd be better. I mean, it doesn't matter what I think, but he would 
could make more of a splash, and then and then sure, eventually run. There's is there time? Is what, right. You know, what's so the, I don't know how this that's works. That's such a good Can question. Can he get out and run as a Green Party that's candidate? That's such a good question, and that's why it was really important to me to interview someone who was an expert on the subject a couple of weeks ago, Richard Winger, who has for a long time, decades, written a blog about election rules all across the country and is one of the most authoritative figures in this space. He came on Bad Faith and he had a lengthy conversation with me about these so-called sore loser laws, which are on the books in many states, which are designed to preclude people who have run in a primary race and lost from then running in a general election race. The problem is very infrequently have these laws been applied in a uh, presidential election contest for the reason that if you are a, let's say, Joe Biden who won no, that's a bad example. Uh, Joe Biden, who lost in Nevada, lost to Bernie in 2020, to say to have a rule that says you're not allowed to be on the ballot because you lost in a primary would preclude the one who won the actual election from being on the ballot in those states. Moreover, historically, and we have a lot of libertarians to thank for this precedent, candidates um, like Gary Johnson have been allowed yes. to run in states despite. Uh, I was going to bring that up. He ran lost. for uh, he ran in the Republican contest for a little while in uh, what's that 26. 2012, 2012, it was 2012, okay, yeah. um, and then dropped out of the Republican race and uh, and pursued the Libertarian nomination right. and got it. So these laws have been very selectively applied, and moreover, there was a big Harvard um, law review uh, study that was looking at the question of whether Donald Trump, it was concerned, it was establishment Republicans, I believe, concerned with whether or not Donald Trump could lose the primary and still run as a third party. And they said that that was unlikely and very difficult. Uh, Richard Winger has a lot of problems with their analysis, but one of the big takeaways is that while it is a tougher battle for a Republican to face because the sore loser law states where there is some precedent on the books of having some, not explicitly sore loser laws, but filing deadlines and stuff that precludes you from doing it, those are disproportionately Republican states. So if you are trying to count up electoral votes to see is there a path to victory for a, a left-leaning, more Democrat-leaning candidate, um, being able to make it through, it's a much stronger case for them as well. What is the situation with yeah. the with the Green Party? Will they just anoint him as their candidate if he if he makes that declaration? Or obviously, Jill Stein has been the candidate of the Green Party in the past. In the past, um, and then Howie Hawkins the last cycle. So this is a really important question. I'm glad you asked it. Uh, Cornell West has been doing a lot of interviews, but I have not heard him say. Elsewhere, what he has said in my interview uh, that was released today for free on Bad Faith, which is that the Green Party has a nomination process. And as an outsider, remember the posture of how he came to be a Green. He initially, initially launched with uh, MPP. There was a lot of pushback because there have been accusations of bad money management, accusations of Me Too with Nick Branagh, the, the founder, and has been push to find an, an alternative party to run with. But the Green Party has its own nomination structure, and people who have been in the Greens and working with the Greens for a long time, and I do think that there was some tension there within the party as to, you know, about a, a someone from the outside coming in and usurping the nomination process. So what Cornell West told me on my show was that he is going to have to work toward winning the Green Party nomination, and frankly, won't know if that will come to fruition until a year from now, at which point, Hypothetically, it might not work. And does, is he just now solely running as an MPP candidate? Because he also hasn't said, I'm going to no longer be associated with M MPP at all, mm -hmm. just that he's doing kind of a dual ticketing situation. So this is far from resolved. Um, it's worth listening to his comments in detail and to get some more follow-up uh, on that. But I, I think I do agree with you strategically if you are really committed to the dirty break, which I think a lot of candidates aren't, but if you are really committed to the dirty break, it is hard to it's hard to understand why you wouldn't want to take advantage of all of the focus that's coming on uh, Demo uh, the Democratic primary process right now. However, I will say that there's a different kind of focus that Cornell West is getting because of how enraged establishment Democrats are on the idea that he would be a spoiler candidate in the general election. People say that about Marianne and RFK Jr., but they're not spoilers around the primary. He really is running as a potential spoiler, and he's getting negative attention, but a certain kind of attention from Democrats as a consequence. I think the strength of Cornell West is that he does get media attention in general. He does a lot of appearances on cable news. Um, he, he's a name that people are familiar with, I think. Um, so he, you know, if he were, regardless of where he's running, he will be able to be on TV. He will be, he has a, he has a way of speaking that's very <laughs> charismatic and yeah. compelling and I think um, fun to listen to, even if you don't agree with him. Um, he has a, you know, a very, I mean, he's a very radical, progressive leftist person, um, but he has that uh, kind of, um, 
almost religious sort of uh, He's a theologian. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, not almost religious, explicitly religious yeah. uh, companionship, fellowship, calls everyone brother this, brother that, <laughs> um, where he's trying to make common cause with people who who very much disagree with him. That is uh, that is um, not not a, not a very common political kind of tact anymore. Yeah. Maybe he can fulfill Biden's promise of healing the soul of this nation. We shall see. <laughs> More rising right after this.